Let's have a closer look at datums. If we look at this example here, we see that we have this box and we tolerated the upper surface of the box to the lower surface of the box using a position tolerance of 0.1. So we said the position of the upper surface should have a position tolerance of 0.1 to A and A is the lower surface. But what is really A? How A is built during the measurement? Let's look at another way to tolerate this part. If we didn't use G, D and T here, and we just used this plus and minus tolerance, 10 plus minus 0 0.05. At the first look, it might look the same. The position is 10 and the tolerance zone is 0 0.1 in the example with G, D and T, which means it can tolerate plus minus 0 0.05. But our main difference lies in the definition of the data, A. 10 plus minus 0 0.05 means that I just measure the distance between the points on the surface. So if my real surface looks like that, then I just keep measuring here two opposite points and they have to be 10 plus or minus 0 0.05. But if we look at the measurement using GD and T, if the real surface still looks the same, datum A is not the real surface itself, but it's an ideally plain and flat surface that is built using the real surface. It's like if you have an ideally flat piece of metal and you push it towards the object and once it rests against the object, this ideally flat surface becomes datum A now. So if I measure now the points on the top surface, if I measure the position, I don't measure to the real surface anymore. I measure to my datum A. And you can already see that the results of the two measurements will not be the same using normal size tolerances, it might actually be okay according to the tolerance. All these distances might be 10, although the shape looks completely different than what we want for the function. But using GD and T here and using datum A, I'm able to define something that's more near to my function later on. Because this part, in this case, is going to be mounted in the assembly and will be resting on the surface A. And it's not going to be resting on every single point of it. It's going to be only resting against the points that were also used to create datum A. But what if the assembly looks like this? We have now two parts, part X, which is a cylinder, and part Y, which is the part that we are now tolerating and designing. And the cylinder X has this surface on top of it, and part Y is actually resting on that surface. Now, in that case, if I use datum A on the surface, this will give a result that's later on not related to the function, because the surface could have looked like that. So the part is twisted like that and if I push a surface datum A against my part it will meet at these points for example here but later on that cylinder it's mounted inside. So in this case it was not correct to choose datum A just like that. But using GDNT we can actually specify this partial part of the surface to be datum A. We don't have to use the whole surface as A. 
we can simulate the function exactly as it is. And the way we do this is when we look at the drawing view, we can specify a position and a shape of datum A. So I use this pointed line and inside it a hatching. And then I point at it. And now I have to use a special symbol for datum A. So I have to use this circle and use A on the lower half of the circle. We will say later what's the upper half for. But that's how you define a partial surface or a part of the surface to be your datum. You can also change the shape of this partial surface. You can also make a rectangle out of the circle or whatever you need it to be, just dependent on th of the shape of the counterpart. What you can also do is choose more than one partial surface to be datum A. So I point at this circle and use again my sample for partial datums and I point at these partial surfaces instead of saying now A I say A1 A2 A3 and A4 and on the upper part of the circle I can specify the diameter of this shape so I say with a circle of a diameter of 4 millimeters, this will be A1 and the three other points are the same, but of course you have to specify their location using theoretical dimensions. So in that case, you can imagine that during the measurement, this part is going to be pushed against a gauge that has these four cylinders with a diameter of four and your part will be resting on top of them exactly on the points where you specified and using this way you are sure that now your part is fixed only on the functional surface only on the surface that matters to you later on the function and it doesn't even have to be a subsurface or a partial surface, it can be a point or more than one point. So you can specify a couple of points on the surface and then point at it at the points and say that this is A1, this is A2 and so on. In this case you have to leave the upper part of the of the circle free because a point doesn't have any dimensions. And the way you do this and the measurement is instead of having a cylinder now with a diameter of four, you will have some kind of sphere, a spherical surface of that cylinder, so that when your part is pushed against it, it has contact in only one point. You can also specify a line. So you can create two points and between them create this dotted line and then point at it and say, that this is my datum A. And in the measurement, you're gonna have to use then cylinder, and when your part is resting on it, it will have contact only with one line. So these are all ways that you can use to define your datums so that they can perfectly match the later on function of the part so that the datums that you use to control other features and other geometrical tolerances are exactly the way you need them later on the function.